today's video we're going to do a little review on this Volkswagen Up, or some of you pronounce it Volkswagen. Um, we'll start off with the exterior, obviously that's what you see first on the car, um, it's not too bad, doesn't look like a, a Volkswagen, apart from the badges, even the interior looks like some foreign company with just a Volkswagen badge stuck in it now and then, no tail tire excuse me, take two, no telltale signs of any Volkswagen interior as you would find in other cars like a Seat or um, anything else, it's just a short dumpy little town car, I wouldn't even call it a city car, courtesy of some moron from Swindon, we got a nice little dent, this particular car is a rental and going back tomorrow thank god for that because I hate it. Um, Visibility from the driver's position is poor. We'll start with that. So we're going to go inside and show you a number of things I don't like about this. <sighs> Number one, the pillar is 90 degrees from the driver's head. So when you come to a roundabout or a T-junction, you can't see a thing. The other feature I hate is the indicators. Every time I go and turn the indicators off, I end up cracking my knuckles on the dashboard. There's not a lot of space there. I haven't exactly got big hands. Um, the gearbox is too uh, too close to the seat in position. You have to put your elbow in the back seat to change gear. Second, fourth and uh, reverse is uh, elbow in the passengers in the back. And again, I keep catching my fingers on the surround because this gear stick is probably about four inches tall. Um, all right in a race car, not okay in this car. Um, what are the other bad things about this car? Oh yeah, there's no air con in this particular model. Um, the fan and directional of the, uh, the air ventilation is poor. Stereo is not too bad. Uh, I like the way you can change track with that, you can change track with that, or you can change track with, by turning that. Skip for the tracks. Um, there's airbags, uh, the air vents are, look, there's none at the front, they're up there. So they kind of blow it up, here you can't control where you want cold air on a hot day. Um, and uh, yeah, there's no mirror on any of them. They couldn't afford that. Glove box, uh, it'll do. Couple of coin holders, single cup holder, which is crap. Single stick lighter in the entire vehicle. Uh, this car has no electric windows or central lock-in. Bit of a pig. Um, back seats, there's only two. Two seat belts, there's no middle belt. Fully adjustable headset headrests. Um, no leg room. And also your blind spot. Look at the state of that window. It's, uh, it's, it's sort of like a triangular shape. So look at that black spot there. You can't see anything in that 18 inch distance there. Uh, you can get a lorry in there and you wouldn't see it. So if you look over your shoulder, on either side of the vehicle, all you get is that big plastic thing there. You get no visibility out the back. The window is tiny, the side windows are a city size and shape. And um, yeah, it's cramped to say the least. Um, even when I'm steering, I'm bashing my knuckles off here as there's an inch and a half gap between the plastic dashboard and the steering wheel, an inch and a half. And if I lower the steering wheel, I can't drive because it's on my knees, and then when you lower it, you can't see the uh, the dials. Um, so that's no good either. Oh, and you can't cancel the indicators. If you touch them, they go three times. If you've done it by mistake, you try and cancel it, it goes the other way three times. You can't actually cancel the indicators. Uh, you can't turn your lights off, which is one of those safety things. So your lights are on, even when they're off. And when you put them on, they go on to dip. Um, have to be on full beam to get your fog light on. Which is daft, because sometimes you don't need your full beam on. Like the other day, it was really foggy. I didn't need my headlights, because I could see it was daylight. But it's a silver car, safety to have my, my uh, fog light on the back. But to get the rear fog light on, I had to have my headlights on full whack. So apologies to all the other drivers. Uh, the headlights at the front are adjustable with this little round thing here, but it kind of like moves over every bump, it's very loose, it doesn't actually click or grind, It's, uh, it's the numbers just sort of float around. It's as if you're spinning the time and date on an iPhone, 
You know, when you go, oh, pick the 12th. Oh, it's gone to the 18th. Oh, back to 12th. It's gone down to tw- uh, 2. You know, it just sort of spins freely as it will. Now the boot and a quick little silhouette of me. Hello. Um, not fantastic. You can only open it when the door car's unlocked, obviously. Uh, also, some strange feature, uh, as you may have seen in my previous video, uh, or photos if you're on my Facebook, you can't actually open the boot while the vehicles are moving. Um, I jumped out of the car the other day, about 15 mile an hour, and left a, a six-year-old girl to uh, continue driving it. And while she was left at the wheel, I decided to put some stuff in the boot while jogging behind it. Couldn't open the boot. It's not actually a button. It's, a, it's an electronic button, not mechanical. So I could only open that when the engine has stopped. Tiny boot. Tiny passer shaft. Doesn't go up when the boot opens. Bit of a pain. You open the boot, you pick something up, and you have to put it down again to lift this up. But it has got a nice shape because they've obviously realised people are going to forget to put this down. Because it's because uh, it doesn't go down by itself, you have to physically put it down. But in case you forget, it's got a nice shape there, so you can see it your rear view mirror. Um, bit of bit of carpet there, not even any wood. Got my toolbox in there the other day and uh, found out it just fell off the tire. Thank God this has actually got a tire because the last car I rented didn't actually have a tire. Oh, but it has got some handy little hooks here and here on both sides of the vehicle to hang up any shopping or pheasants or poultry or any sort of game plastic sheet obviously needed single handle only for closing so ambidextrous or left-handed people may suffer with this feature and nothing on the outside to hold it the handle is designed so you don't get dirty hands of course when you bring it down so far you're gonna get dirty closing it the rest of the way oh there's me again even the aerial's cheap. When you twang it, the entire roof moves. I'm not sure if the camera's going to pick this up. I'm only gently twanging it, but the whole roof moves. You can see there the aerial's moving. It's basically made out of paper, this car. Little hooks in the back to hang uh, little teddy bears if you're a single mum and you like hanging meaty bears up or, or bears of cartoon characters. You can hang them up in the rear for your children. Or, if you're like me and you like teasing children, get a newborn and scrap it in the back and hang its dummy out of reach. Um, that's about it, really. Oh, the handling? Don't buy it. It's okay. Fuel-wise, it costs about £35 to fill it up. Uh, with whatever rate we're paid at the moment, per litre, per gallon. Um, you can fill it up. £35, 55p. I've just filled it up. And that will do about 240 mile. I'm doing a 200 mile in five days just for the school run and um, that's not too bad um, but handling mm, when you come to a hill take a run up and you might end up in second gear to get to the top of the hill it doesn't like hills um, doesn't like acceleration doesn't like speed bumps doesn't like corners on a slow slight corner if you hit the smallest of stones you don't just lose traction in one wheel you lose traction in all cars at uh, all wheels of the car and the car is twitching like a fish out of water on the smallest sort of pebble on a smooth surface so caution on corners even at 10 15 mile an hour you know in a long sloping corner um you hit a pebble this thing is twitching like a like a fish out of water as i say um so yeah it's going back tomorrow um thank god generally i could you know you get a feel within an hour if you like the car or not within an hour i knew i hated this thing um as i say a couple of months ago before this I rented the uh, Dow Spark I think no sorry Chevy Spark and uh, the Chevy Spark within an hour I fell in love with it when I first picked it up I didn't want to get in it I was embarrassed I didn't like it but um yeah compared this parent Volkswagen to the uh, Chevy Spark which is the alternative to this when you rent a car I definitely would recommend the uh, Chevy uh, the Chevy Spark fantastic little car um, this thing's not much good for anything. I'd rather have an acrid old rust bucket than, than this poorly built excuse of a car. Sorry to offend the people that have built it or own one and like them, each to their own. It is quite a good car, as I say, for town and around. I wouldn't call it a city car, but if you're just nipping to the shop, that doesn't even match up. There's a gap on there. Big, then it gets small. 
You only get that if you've been in a crash. This thing was built that way. Um, yeah, if you're just nipping down a shop for a loaf of bread and a pint of milk, you know, that's, this is a car for you. Uh, oh, God, yeah, this is also the thing. If you want to get anyone in the back, don't bother. Oh, God, I hate it. It's a two-handed thing like the boot. You can't pull the lever and the seat foot forward. You have to pull the lever with your knee, obviously holding your shopping in the other hand or a child, with your left hand, seat forward. Actually, tell a lie, it does spring forward by its, on its own, but then you need your hand to push it back. Problem with that is, um, it doesn't go forward completely on the rails. You then have to slide it forward. So anyone with big legs, or even actually a three-year-old I've been dropping off in the mornings struggles to get in and out the gap. Which as you can see is non-existent. And then if you are unfortunate, have to use the driver's seat. Hang on, let's see if I can do it one-handed. Uh, go, go, gadget elbow. They don't reset. So the chances of you getting it back to the position it was in beforehand is also a nightmare. So if you're a driver and anyone gets in your side to the back, Good luck in getting comfortable in your seat again. You could be there a while adjusting it. The seat's got no memory. Most cars flop forward, slide forward, and then go back to the original place. These things are random. Oh, every seat. What's the date on that? That was in the car already. Not good of the uh, rental company. The amount of rubbish, receipts and tissue under the seat was disgusting. Storage. Great little storage thing there. Um, big storage in the doors. Speaker's not bad. But generally, I'd recommend keeping way away from this thing. It's deadly. Anyway, I think that's about it. I've probably left a few things out. I really can't be bothered to spend too much time on it. Um, the the people I've spoke to in the back, ch children and adults, have not appreciated the ride at all. Um, all different shapes and sizes of adults have been in this in the past four weeks, and they haven't enjoyed it one bit. Not one person said, oh, I like this little car. Even the children don't like it. As I say, I have no idea what engine size this is. It feels a little bit like 49cc. That's easy enough. It's tiny. Even the phone's tiny. Uh, the battery's tiny. I think I've got a bigger battery in my phone. I was meant to say. Hopefully no one noticed. Another mistaken speech. Lots of things for people to criticise about this car. Just like lots of things for people to criticise on my videos. Shouldn't there be a, shouldn't there be a cane and air thought on the end of that thing? Hmm. MPI Caution Warning Attention mm. As you can see The refill bottle lids are uh, accessible The oars accessible and the dipstick's accessible Unlike the scenic, I think I had to take the plastic cover off the scenic to get the oar filter cap um, Yeah, everything's accessible Battery is just small I suppose there's room for upgrades, bigger batteries, air filters. Probably not going to get an intercooler in there. No, no room for an intercooler. Oh, there might be. Don't know. It's an ugly looking car. Look at that. All these curvy lines and then triangle things here. It's a big gap. I don't get this gap. That doesn't match up. Is that deliberate? Did they, did they measure it wrong? Anyway, the sun's going down. Uh, it's getting late now. This is going back tomorrow. Just wanted to uh, show people close up the Volkswagen up or the Volkswagen up. Um, it's not too bad, not too good. I'm going to overall rate this, I think, of a f three, maybe generous, a four out of ten. No, yeah, two out of ten, I reckon. Two out of ten for me, but for the average person, it's probably going to get a rating of a four. Um, I wouldn't feel safe in the motorway, even at 50 mile an hour, if I get over to or a vehicle passes the other way, it shakes, it doesn't like the wind, even at like, I don't know, 40, 50 mile an hour. So despite the ripple in the roof, <laughs> so I was trying to do a Jonathan Ross there, the ripple in the roof, the ripple in the roof, 
no, the ripple in the roof, no, the ripple in the roof, that's it, yeah, as Jonathan Ross would say, the ripple in the roof, when the aerials twanged, <laughs> um, the blind spots, the bad handling, the uncomfortable seating position, the useless adjustable seats, the annoying indicators and lights, um, the lack of speed or power to get up a hill, the terrible everything configuration and the sheer fact that it looks like a bloody Yaris only slightly different back windows um, yeah I'm only glad I came out here tonight to video this mast I think I'm gonna come up here Sunday with the radios um, I was hoping to find a space behind it to hide with all the radio gear do some DX uh, there's enough space here to set up uh, just get the usual funny looks from people as they walk by. It's a telephone transmitter for the local area. Just a little repeater station. I think there's about seven of these in this town. And this one's my local one. I'd love to get an aerial up there. Run the feeder down, out the side, to a waterproof box, connection box. And then every time I come up, just plug into the, uh, to the antenna. Right, I'm going to get going, because uh, I'm bored. Um... But yeah, I just sort of made a joke on Facebook earlier about doing a a review on this car before I take it back. And um, all honestly, I'd rather drive it to the scrapyard than drive it to uh, to the rental place because I think this should be scrapped, crushed, and recycled into blooming key rings. You'd get more use out of them. All right, thanks for watching my review on the uh, the Volkswagen up. Um, we're going to call it the Volkswagen down. Uh, take care. Got to turn the radio off for this because uh, YouTube don't like my music. Uh, Green Lane's alright, I came up here the other day after some heavy rain and there was uh, about 8 inches of water. Puddles were awesome, it was just pure mud and it was fun, it had the thing going sideways, um, lots of bumps. Um, but yeah, it handled Green Laning quite well, so if you want a car to just absolutely smash up Green Laning, this could be the one for you. Um, failing that, if you want a little a car to look after, don't bring it up here. Right, we're going to go and avoid some potholes, or we're going to lose our deposit. Um, catch you all next time.